Hey everyone, Riyad from Right Home Realty. Hello everyone, Will Ellis from Right at Home Realty. Hello everyone, Denise Ranger of Ranger Paralegal Service. Pleasure to have you today. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Nice. Perfect. Well, describe your business and what makes your business stand out. Okay, so um, I think for me, um, I'll, I'll do the what my business is first, which is I'm a licensed paralegal. So I provide legal services in areas of um, landlord tenant boards, so residential tenancies um, at the landlord tenant board level, as well as small, claim, small claims court matters. Um, both of those areas involve monetary amounts of up to $35,000 per application or per claim. Um, and some things can get very, uh, very interesting. Um, one of the ways that uh, I try to stand out is to focus on a niche, which is basically anything that touches real estate. I've, oh, wow. I've always had a soft spot for real estate. So, Were you a real estate agent at one time, from my memory? Yes, I was a very long time ago with a wonderful firm <laughs> called Remax Ability, um, wow. uh, local to uh, Durham region. And as a re result of um, in, uh, being involved in that part of the industry and, and both the sales as well as the drafting of the contracts and things, um, I, I really found um, a voice for myself uh, that I really love the advocacy part on behalf of my clients. Um, finding that perfect house was always wonderful and, and, and writing the contract was really um, exciting too, but um, advocating and, and negotiating the, the agreement of purchase and sale was always something that I really, really loved. So um, I decided to, to switch teams and now I provide <laughs> legal services for people who, you know, whose things don't go quite so well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so tell us your story. You know, how, how did you get here? Uh, what made you get into this? Um, and where are you from originally? Okay, so I'm I'm a Oshawa girl through and through. Um, okay. Grew up here from a very young age. Um, I've watched the city grow, um, and and you know the good, bad, and the ugly that you see with any <laughs> any um, fairly reasonably large municipality. Um, and and I love the place. I, I just I don't think I could leave right now um, at all. And my friends are here, and my colleagues are here, and this is where my business is, and so I love it. Um, as far as how I got to be in the business that I'm in now, um, as we touched on it a moment ago, it stemmed from real estate, um, but I've always been involved with um, service industry, customer service, um, uh, consult consulting, helping people. So um, eventually I, I got into real estate and absolutely loved it, but there were things about it that didn't quite suit um, my, my, um, my lifestyle goals. So I decided to switch and I went back to school um, and became a paralegal. So now I provide legal services, like I said, to people who um, have matters involving small claims court, um, mostly involving things involving property, um, whether it be breach of contract or breach of an agreement of purchase and sale or um, contractor issues involving, you know, they've, somebody's hired a, a contractor to do some work on their home. Um, as well as residential tenancies, which seems to kind of go hand in hand. Um, and I've been very, very fortunate in this area where I've got a lot of support coming from the community. Um, and so my business is thriving right now. And do you focus mainly in Durham region or it could be anywhere? Well, um, initially that's where I, I focus. Um, but one of the, um, I guess, bonuses of, of the whole pandemic and the COVID issues um, that we've gone through over the last couple of years is that um, the landlord tenant board has expanded and um, moved basically um, they put um, their focus on all of their hearings is digital first. Um, so that allows people like myself who provide legal services in that area to um, assist people all over Ontario. So it doesn't matter if you're in the GTA or in the greater GTA, or if you're in Timmins, or if you're in Sudbury, or you're in wherever. Um, if there's a landlord tenant board matter, I, I can help you. Very nice. So you mentioned, you mentioned uh, that little thing called the COVID. Uh -huh. And <laughs> so, COVID you know, <laughs> so, so coming out of COVID, which I think we are coming out of it slowly, uh, and now we're seeing some fingers. <laughs> I know, fingers crossed. Now we're seeing some, you know, things happening with the rental market. 
Um, what, what, like, what are the things, what things are coming across your desk? Um, right now, um, as you are aware, the rent, uh, the just housing in general is, is a hot topic. Um, yes. the real estate market has been crazy busy as I'm sure you know that. Um, but on the flip side of that, because, um, because prices have gone so high, um, we're also see, I'm also seeing that reflected in both the rental market where um, people who are looking to rent a property are, are they're in, getting involved in bidding wars and the selection is all, there's a very low inventory on that as well. Um, part and parcel of all of that is there are a lot of landlords out there who are, are looking to cash in on this market with their, their investment properties. So I am seeing an abundance of um, requests for assistance in um, getting a, a tenant to, to either vacate a property or assisting with the process of, of um, a purchaser or a, 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 a purchasing a tenanted property and what that involves. Um, and I'm also seeing an awful lot of, of requests for what they call cash for keys, which is um, basically a, a generic term for uh, both parties, uh, landlords and tenants getting together and kind of coming to some sort of an agreement to end the tenancy amicably without having to proceed all the way to the landlord tenant board. It's just an out of court settlement, um, but they can get pretty complex. Now with, with the, with the cash for keys program, which we've talked about before, um, is, is it, you work with the landlord only, or do you work with tenants or work with both sides? Um, I can only work for one side or the other, um, right. due to confidentiality issues, right. um, but I have worked on both sides and I do work on both sides. So I can see things from the landlord's point of view and I can very easily see things from the tenant's point of view. And there's, it's, it's kind of the wild west. It's really fun. <laughs> um, and that, that for me, that's, that's, um, uh, sort of the heart of advocacy is sitting down at a, uh, trying to, to bring parties together in a negotiation um, to, to get something that people will, all people, um, all parties will live with. Perfect. Now with that, I'm going to keep asking questions to Riyadh until you, until you get tired of me That's speaking. Okay. But to make that <laughs> process, because, you know, I dealt, dealt with clients and, you know, landlords and tenants in this situation. Yep. What helps that process go smoothly? Um, having a reality check really is kind of the beginning <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, you know, there are people out there that think that just because something is uncomfortable that it's illegal or wrong. Um, I've had uh, parties come to me and say, oh, my tenant's trying to extort me. And that's not true because that's a, a, an actual legal term, which means you have to have criteria and, you know, it, it doesn't really rise to that level. Um, uh, I've had tenants come to me and say, oh, my landlord's trying to kick me out. Now I want, you know, how much money can I get? And, right. and again, that on the other side, it's like, it's not reasonable to ask for or think that you're going to get a hundred thousand dollars from your landlord because they want to sell. <laughs> um, right. Somewhere in the middle is where we usually land. Um, and it all depends on the parties and their, their willingness to be reasonable. Now, what if someone is unreasonable? How does that get resolved? That gets interesting. Um, right. Usually my approach to that is when there's people, when somebody is being unreasonable, there's usually a reason for it. Um, and that's, uh, if you poke hard enough, you'll probably, uh, or in, in the right places, you'll probably find some sort of um, weakness or at the very least a bargaining chip. Right. So it's trying to go to the heart of the reason why the person appears on the face to be unreasonable, ask them why. Um, yep. and, and that's my job is to ask the, ask enough questions until somebody gives me an answer that makes sense. Interesting. What, uh, what motivates you each day? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I try to use my powers for good. I really do. I really do. Right. <laughs> um, there's that. I mean, I, I love getting up and, and trying to run a business and doing good for people. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, when you, you know, you, I, I get an email or a, a call from a client or somebody that I've helped and they just say, you know what, I'm, I, I don't think I could have done that without you. Awesome job. Thank you so much. That's, that's a huge reward for me. 100%. That's awesome.